You'd think that with a 96 ball plate, you'd be able to test, well, 96 things, right? Unfortunately, you have to account for edge effects as well as your controls. Edge effects is basically where the outer edges, the outer wells of your plate, experience different conditions than the inner wells, um, especially with regards to their temperature and their volume because of evaporation. So it's worse in like the outer corners um, and then the outer rim, and then as you go in, it gets gradually better. So basically what happens is that in your dish, these outer wells are going to experience faster and more evaporation and they're going to experience like a higher temperature um, or at least adaptation to the temperature. So for example, if you were to stick your plate in the incubator, those outer wells, so if you stick in like the 37 plate degree incubator after like preparing your plate at room temperature, well now the outer wells are gonna get hotter first. If you are like, so plating cells and you're trying to seed them, then the cells at the outer edge, they're going to actually like settle down first. And you can actually get this like crescent shape where the cells are on the outer edges of those wells. So you get this uneven cell distribution. Even if you're not trying to do any sort of cell based thing, oh, a way that you can avoid that is if you actually like seed your cells. So you um, when you seed cells, you basically put a little bit of amount and then allow them to grow, like settle down and grow. And so when you seed it, you can actually leave your plate at room temperature for like one or two hours um, before you stick it in the incubator. And that's gonna help with the adhesion issue. But when your plate is in the incubator, it's still on the outer edges. They're still going to warm up faster and they're going to stay, um, they're going to fluctuate more. Like when people like open and close the door of the incubator and that sort of thing, they have less insulation than the cells in the middle and the wells in the middle. So I'm talking about cells because often we're doing cell-based assays. So this is where it really comes into play, this temperature fluctuation, but it can also come into fluctuation for all sorts of different assays. So different experiments where you're trying to measure things in these different wells. And if you can't compare the center wells to the outer wells, well, that is a big pain. So in addition to this temperature gradient from being on the outer versus the inner, you can also have temperature gradient problems with like stacking plates where the top and the bottom are going to get warmer faster um, and then like be less insulated than the others. So that is the temperature um, and there are also like evaporation issues and so which is in part related to the temperature um, but basically what happens is that the outer wells are going to evaporate more um, and they're going to evaporate faster and this means that the volume is going to change in these wells more than it's going to change in the other wells so the volume is going to decrease in these outer wells now if you're trying to do some sort of measurement where it's shining light through and it's relying on that light being shown through a specific volume um, so like a path well now, if you have less volume, that path length is going to be shorter, but your calculations are going to be expecting it to be that same longer height. And so then this can cause inaccuracies. Um, evaporation is also going to be concentrating down all the stuff that was in there. So the concentrations of the solutes that dissolve things are going to be different in those wells versus other wells. So in order to try to reduce the evaporation, what you can do is minimize the like opening and closing of the doors. Um, of your incubator if you're trying to incubate something. Um, you can seal the plate. So if you're doing some sort of cell-based assay, you wanna make sure that you're sealing it with some sort of breathable tape. Um, you can use plates that are specially designed to be low evaporation. Now, I'll, I linked to a paper where they basically show that all these, a bunch of different plate companies and different plate brands are really different in terms of how bad the edge effects are. Some are better than others, so you might wanna look into that if you're um, trying to figure out which plates to use, but companies also sell like special plates that have various adaptations to prevent the edge effects. These include like using a lower, um, lower hanging lid so that like go all the way down or almost all the way down. Um, to try to reduce evaporation having like condensation rings like above each individual well so that when the when things do evaporate and when they fall when the water like drips back down it's dripping down into the same well not into like the neighboring well um there are ones that you actually stick like they have a moat around it um and so you stick liquid in that moat or even like between the cells and this is helping with the insulation and with keeping the red the humidity the same throughout another way is just avoid them altogether but if you do avoid them, you don't want to leave them empty. You want to make sure that you're filling like all the wells. You're filling those outer wells. It's gonna serve as kind of like a buffer around everything. If you leave those out, well now the inner row is now your outer row and the problems just 
further down in your plate and it'll still be problems. Um, so you want to fill those with like a buffer or with sterile water or something if you're not using them. But if you're not using them, you're losing like a third of your volume and it's like so sad. Um, yeah, so edge effects, big problem. Um, problems with evaporation and temperature gradients can cause problems with, salt, with the path length, with the concentrations, um, with temperature, so with activity and things like that. Um, and so those were just a few tips that can help you hopefully. Um, and then you can always just avoid it if you're able to, um, but then you have to have more plates if you don't have enough on your single plate. And remember, you have to have controls too, so you can't actually fit that many experiments in like a 96 wheel plate. So then you might turn into like a 384 or 1000, whatever, like they make a bunch bigger fits too. But those are also gonna suffer from edge effects. You can also, if you're doing different samples, like in replicates, don't plate them in the exact same position, like rotate them. So I'm setting up an experiment where I'm putting in like them five, um, like five concentrations and then I'm rotating which one is like on the outer and which one is on the inner in the next set so that if there are like fluctuations between where things are located those will kind of like even out some of that noise um, so yeah so edge effects are a big pain um, and hope this helps you understand what they are how you can potentially um, get around them or reduce them and that sort of thing so happy experiment